I'm Kristen Oaks-White. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. For many farmers in the Louisiana Delta, December means the off-season has arrived and farmers can retreat to a deer stand or a duck blind. But many also spend their days getting ready for next year. This week, Twyla's Carl Wiggers shows us how a Tinsaw Parish farmer is planting deep roots in conservation this winter. After his fields of cotton, corn, and soybeans are harvested, Kellen Lee returns to plant a new crop that will serve a huge purpose this winter. We get our cover crops planted as soon as we can in uh, November, sometimes in September. And um, going on out here, we, we're there's a lot of a lot of rain, a lot of a lot of erosion can start happening during the winter time. But these cover crops will, uh, with the root system, that helps helps keep that down, keeps everything in place. This year, Lee planted more than 2,300 acres in either a winter wheat or cowpeas. So with the uh, winter wheat, uh, we're going for the root system, and then the vegetation will bring it, put in, put back a lot of organic matter, and so the field didn't just bear all winter long. It's a, it's a whole nother crop of vegetation. The cowpeas are a legume, so they'll, they'll put back a little bit of nitrogen as well. So we're getting a little bit more benefit, not just the organic matter, not just the root system. We're, we're actually getting some nitrogen back. Planting cover crops is not a new practice to Louisiana farmers but it is at an extra expense. That's why Lee enlisted the help of the Natural Resources Conservation Service senior planner Eddie Foster to help with erosion on his farm. If we were just putting this out here to control soil erosion, that would be fine. But just by doing that, you're getting other benefits through the organic matter, through the root uh, infiltration system. Uh, I mean, the. You really can't just address one resource. You can come in to address one resource concern, but you're going to get multiple benefits out of a cover crop. Foster says most farmers who implement cover crops through programs like this find their input costs are lowered over time. Now, of course, you do have a cost to purchase the seed and to apply it, which, you know, it's hard to come by. Times are tough right now. So, you know, with these financial incentives like EQIP or the Conservation Stewardship Program, which is another topic, with these programs like EQIP, we can help you get started, you know, down that path. With that funding, that enabled us to really increase our, our acreage and uh, get, get a lot more involved. It's, uh, it's a really easy program to be involved with, and um, it, it certainly boosted our, boosted our cover crop. For Lee, planting cover crops is just one more way to be more sustainable on his farm. The way that he tracks that is through the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol. All growers are being as sustainable as they can to stay in business. And uh, with the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol, this is just a way to measure it and a way to show it. This is a way to tell our story of things that we've been doing, my dad was already doing and his dad before, the consumers want to know what we're doing to protect the environment. They're getting much more involved with the chain of every product that they're purchasing and making these decisions, implementing these practices now. It's going to help our products sell. It's going to help help cotton uh, sell to more markets. And uh, not to mention, it's going to make this farm more sustainable for, for the next generation when, when me and my wife start having children. To learn more about the NRCS or the Cotton Trust Protocol, head over to our website at twilatv.org. Well, now is the time of year when everyone's decorating for the holidays, and we couldn't do it without agriculture. This week, Twila's Neil Melanson takes us to Clegg's Nursery, where some unusual poinsettias can really get you in the festive mood. My name is Scott Ricca. I am one of the owners with Clegg's Nursery here in Baton Rouge and Denham Springs. Uh, Christmas is a really big season for us. We go through a lot of preparation for our holiday plants, our poinsettias, and our Christmas trees. Our poinsettias, none fresher around. We grow our own poinsettias. This year in 2020, we grew approximately 11,000 poinsettias uh, in different sizes, uh, up to 47 different varieties. Hey, I'm Elena Fennell. I'm a greenhouse grower with my husband, Ron, uh, here for Clegg's Nursery Color Division in Baton Rouge. Uh, we grow a little over 10,000 poinsettias each year, uh, mostly for the retail locations. Uh, this year, we had about 45 uh, different varieties of poinsettias in the greenhouse. We share research trials at the LSU Ag Center Botanic Gardens at Burden for our consumer uh, survey for the poinsettia open house. 
which we started doing. This is our third year to do it. Yeah. Some of the varieties we grow are the uh, Prestige Early Red. Uh, we've got Christmas Beauty Pink, Christmas Red Traditions. What customers like about the autumn leaves is uh, the unique color on it, the pink and yellow color tones that are good for uh, autumn colors and combination pots. Um, also good just for early uh, Christmas decorating. Another one we've got is this red glitter, which is uh, an, an also a newer variety. Uh, it happens to be one of my favorites with the white splotch and the uh, red in it. It uh, comes into color a little bit later, so it's uh, not always ready for Thanksgiving displays, but uh, really good for closer to Christmas. And uh, mixes in really well with the regular uh, prestige red poinsettias and then the whites also. Now this is a poinsettia, which is uh, different from the typical poinsettia. This is a uh, poinsettia red. This one comes into color earlier around Thanksgiving also, so it gives you a longer time to decorate uh, for the holidays. Yeah, so come in and come see me. Uh, we'll give you a hand with all of your holiday decorations needs with the poinsettias this year whenever you're ready. And a fun fact, poinsettias can be more than just a holiday plant. For tips on how to keep those beauties looking good all year long, we'll have a link for you on our website at twilighttv.org. Thomas Jefferson once called agriculture the crown of all other sciences. That's why including agriculture into education helps students learn about almost every subject taught in the classroom. Twyla's Avery Davidson introduces us to the 2020 Louisiana Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year who uses agriculture as a universal language. They say a picture speaks a thousand words. These pictures of Amy Perrette's third grade class at Bridgedale Elementary in Jefferson Parish do say a lot but speak even more to some of her students. You see, many of the children in Mrs. Perrette's class are learning English as a second language. So to help them learn English language arts and social studies, she incorporated agriculture into the lessons, brought in sweet potatoes, and introduced them to a beekeeper. So they were making those connections themselves, and you could see that spark, and they would get all excited because they remembered this. Um, Outside on the playground, Miss Pret, there's a honeybee. It's collecting pollen. It's going to bring it back. It's going to make honey. So those were those aha moments that were super rewarding for me because they got it. They remembered it, and then they were able to apply it. So if I can enrich their brains, I'm not just giving them information. They're retaining it and able to make a connection. I'm doing my job. She's taught our students, our staff, our administration so much about what agriculture means to students and to the classroom. You know, I never really saw the connection until she started to gush about it. Julie Broussard is the principal at Bridgedale Elementary. She says Mrs. Perrette's use of teaching materials from the Louisiana Ag in the Classroom program really helps bridge the language gap. She saw that if she pulled in some information about agriculture and some real life experiences about these things, that the students would not only connect more with the curriculum, but that she would, they would be able to experience things they never had or maybe never will experience. There was a time when agriculture was almost like a foreign language to Mrs. Perrette. She got a crash course when she married a farmer. I grew up in a rural area, but not in a farm. Um, I, I grew up in a very industrial area and my neighborhood was surrounded by two oil plants. Um, and then I met my husband and moved to a real farm and that was eye-opening and now raising my own children on a farm and my my kids know where their food comes from they are participants in 4-H so they raise their chickens they raise their their hogs they raise their cattle and we eat them so my kids literally know where their food comes from and I think it's really important your food does not come from Winn-Dixie or Rouse's or any supermarket your food comes from a farm and kids should know that. Boys and girls, I'm here today to read a book, but I'm also here for a special presentation. That's Mrs. Perrette's mother-in-law letting her know that she is the 2020 Louisiana Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year. Perrette says at that point, she spoke in a language everyone in her classroom could understand. And I just immediately started crying because I'm a very humble person. Um, I, I don't see myself as that, you know, the best and greatest. I, I guess I just really give myself the short end of the stick. So when I was recognized as Ag Teacher in the Year, I was completely blown away. I was completely surprised. Um, 
But then elated that I was being recognized for something that means so much to me. I, I, I really think it's important for kids to understand how agriculture affects them in every everyday life, from the clothes they wear to the food they eat, to the way they get from one place to another. It's imperative for kids to know where all of these things come from. And that's true in every language. I'm Avery Davidson for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Perrette was also named Teacher of the Year at Bridgedale Elementary, so congratulations for another well-deserved honor. The Louisiana Ag in the Classroom program is currently accepting applications for the 2021 Teacher of the Year. You can learn more and even apply online at twilatv.org. Still to come on Twyla, how many ways can you think of to use pecans on your Christmas table? We'll show you a couple more after the break in a brand new Field to Feast. Stay with us. Welcome to Field to Feast, where we profile Louisiana and its local ingredients. Today, we're at my friend Yvette Bonanno's house, and we're going to make some delicious holiday treats using Louisiana pecans. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board. Think rice. Hi, Phil. How are you? It's good to see you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Are you ready to get started? We're going to cook up Perfect some holiday treats. Start. Yes. So what all do we have going on here today? including all of these delicious looking pecans. So we produce the um, spiced rum pecans at the LSU incubator using Bergeron. Uh, Mr. Lester over in uh, New Roads. Yes. Um, he has uh, amazing uh, facility, plant, people shelling. This is their busy time of the year. Um, we use them in the spiced rum pecans as a whole pecan and we use a mammoth which is going to be your larger count. Okay. And then we take the chopped pecans and we put them in our praline rum cakes also made at the LSU incubator. So for the holidays, you're picking them up in the grocery stores and it's a wonderful hostess gift or pair it together, um, you know, with a, a nice bottle and then uh, I you're already good to bought, go. I bought a closet full. So let's get started. Okay. This is so easy. I okay. mean, you know, the uh, the easy traditional, good. I know, the traditional good. pecan ball that you see on the table, we're going to make it, um, you know, from scratch and again, very easy. We've got four ounces of goat cheese. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to put this into the bowl. We also have four ounces of cream cheese, so equal parts. This is one of my favorites, okay. so we're going to go in with A little trick. Yep, two ounces on the fig preserve. Okay, so four, four, and two. Four, so four, and far, two. This is working for me. I know, and then all we're going to do is take a little bit of kosher salt, okay. and we're going to we're going to just season it lightly. Okay. So that's probably less than an eighth of a teaspoon. So now what we're just going to do is we're going to combine these together. A little rough chop. Well, I can see how this is a crowd pleaser and an easy favorite. So oh, there is that heat. Yes. It's, I mean, it's. So, it, what is That's the cayenne? That's the cayenne pepper. It's an organic cayenne that we use. And then I'm just going to put them that, right How in. long have you been doing this? So, grew up in the restaurant business um, and then continued on after. Um, I had a catering company here in Baton Rouge and two small cafes. Um, after that, I, I moved away to Colorado and had two little girls, so um, that was uh, enough to keep me busy, and now I'm back in Baton Rouge, so um, got a few fun projects on the horizon, and um, you know, Baton Rouge has always been good to me, so I yes. just, um, I'm glad to be home. I've got family here, and um, you know, the business is uh, just, you know, also keeping me busy, so. But Louisiana is home for you. Yes, I'm born in Baton Rouge, and um, you know, when my parents opened restaurants and 
were in this business um, for quite some time. Um, I just was always in the front of the house, is what we call it. So my dad was always, you know, saying, don't go into the kitchen. You know, that it's not the place for you. And uh, we opened up another restaurant in um, 1995, and then I fell in love with the food aspect of it. Yeah. And I've never left the kitchen. So I, uh, I feel very fortunate to, to love what I do. All right, Jen, so what we'd like to do is you can um, either chill your stuffing okay. and prepare it the night before. Okay. And then roll them while they're, you know, a little bit, you have a little bit more stability. Or what I'm going to do now is put these in the fridge just to firm them up a little bit. And uh, we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a taste in Ooh, just a few goodness. months. These look absolutely delicious. I'm so excited to try them. Stay with us because we're going to chill these up. And next up, we're going to make a kale and Brussels sprout salad and some sweet potatoes using Louisiana pecans. to feast. You guys are in for a real treat next because we're making a kale and Brussels sprout salad for the holidays. So what do we have going on? First thing we're going to do is wash your kale very well. Okay. And we're going to remove the stem. So all you do is you just take your hand and just roll it straight down the stem. So all I do is just kind of put it into like a little tight bunch and then use your knife and then just a, a chop. Just a, a chop. chop. Yep, and almost, you know, like we talk talk about the fancy French word chiffonade. Ooh. Ribbons, that's pretty much Very what well we're doing. Yes, you know, so uh, if you want to impress your guests. <laughs> Excuse but, me while I chiffonade. <laughs> and, you know, go as, uh, as slow as or as comfortable as you feel um, with your knife. So now we're going to turn our attention to the Brussels sprouts. Okay. I mean, I'm seeing them on the long stalks, yes. which are absolutely gorgeous. So you're going to take it off. This is where you're the root stem is. Okay. We're just going to remove that. And then always just be cognizant or just careful with your knife. So I wouldn't want to start cutting it while it's rolling. So simply cut it in half. And give it that flat yes. edge. Yes. And then yeah. that way you can just run your knife straight down. And um, it's just, it's a lot safer. Also, you can do this in your Cuisinart. If you put the okay. blade on there, which you uh, would use for like shredding your cabbage, all the Brussels sprouts, once they're washed and then the stems are removed, can go right into And we're going to add our dressing. Look how pretty. I'll let you give that a toss. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look how pretty this is. And then we'll garnish a little bit on the top. OK, well, I do have to say it was an incredible tossing. <laughs> That really probably made the difference you know, from, from good to great. That's right. That's it's right. It's all in the toss. Um, look how beautiful. Oh, my goodness gracious. And so then we can go on with a little bit of our sun-dried uh, sun cranberries. Beautiful. Finished off with just a little bit of that cheese. And Difference between the pecorino and the parmesan. So pecorino, it has, um, it's going to be a softer cheese. Okay. The parmesan is just going to be a little bit sharp. Yeah. So um, you could even use Asiago if, okay. um, or even a Romano. But I do, I fresh, freshly grate it, and I think it makes all the difference in the world when you're doing of like a fresh application. I'm so. so excited for our holiday meal. So we've got our salad and we've got our pecan balls. And next up is sweet potatoes. Let's go for it. <laughs> so we've got softened butter, honey, honey and your pecans. And then a spiced pecans, which are Wonderful. already seasoned with salt, a little bit of cayenne, again, more sugar. Yeah, that um, and pepper then pepper in the back that sting later. Yeah, and, and so yeah. that's all you need. So our sweet potatoes, we've washed them. We're okay. just going to put them right onto our baking dish lined with foil. And to this, we're going to add, this is just a little bit of pumpkin spice. Um, this is just a little olive oil. It's going to go onto the potatoes. What a fun little fancy. And then we're just going to take our spice blend and put it right over the top. So are you putting all of the spice on the skin because you eat the skin as well or does the flavor I do through. eat the skin as well yes. because that's where you're going to get a lot of the vitamins from yes, the but yes and not to mention you know all of that is going to seep into it but okay. it also makes your kitchen smell really good as well I already I mean if you need to be in the Christmas spirit even more just make some of these sweet potatoes and here you have it so 375 okay. um, I like the smaller potatoes so you know the bigger ones you I have a full 
commitment. Yes. So yes. I like the smaller ones, and of course, Magic of TV, we've got some ready to go. Awesome. Because I've seen, and Betty Chenier was telling me, that there are the regular, the medium, the jumbo, but you seem to like the smaller ones. And anything, it, um, as far as it goes, it's gonna be sweeter, and it's a portion size too. You know, it's hard to commit to the, to the bigger potatoes. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it like such. And then we are going to mount this butter, pecan, honey mixture right on the top. Oh my word. So you just cut these in the diet. See, look at that fanciness. That is something that I did not know how to do, and I will do. And then we're just gonna go right into it. Mm. This dish, it perfectly complements our and it smells delicious, delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's like salad. We had a wonderful day here in Yvette's kitchen, and if you would like the recipes for any of the dishes that you've seen on our show today, please visit us at twilighttv.org. Friend, this Aww. has been a super special day for me. Thank you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and we're gonna dig in. Cheers. Cheers. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat and by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board. Think rice. Now, if you'd like to try these treats in your kitchen, we have a blog post that outlines the recipe for you at twilighttv.org. What happens when 13 dogs and one cat sit down for a traditional Christmas dinner? We have the hilarious answer in this week's furball-themed holiday Twila Boost. <laughs> Now, how cute was that? We also found a few behind the scenes clips and some bloopers of this shoot from Fresh Pets that we posted on our website at twilighttv.org. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we will look back at some of the biggest stories from 2020. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twilighttv.org and be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find all of these stories and more on our YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe to us and turn on the notifications so you know when we put out new content. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.